Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on another one of uh, Scott's reels. This is the popular Dio Assaultist LW Level Wind. It's a high speed. It's the model 30HA and it's a 6.1 to 1 retrieve saltwater fishing reel. A very well made and popular uh, addition uh, to the Dio collection. So we're going to show you how to take this apart, how to service it, and uh, keep it fishing for a long time to come. And the first thing we're going to do then is remove the exterior parts. That starts with the handle cap, the handle, and the uh, star adjuster. So to start with the handle cap, there's a set screw that we've just removed. Then you uh, you need a wrench, and uh, this wrench is kind of a multi-purpose wrench. I got it off of uh, mysticparts.com. Uh, it kind of handles the Shimano and the pen uh, screw heads, but uh, if you don't have one of those, if you want to be real careful, uh, just kind of take a, a kitchen scrubby, kind of wrap it around the threads or put electrical tape around the threads and then uh, use a uh, pair of pliers so that you can remove that. Uh, if you just have the one reel and you're not interested in buying the, the wrench, go ahead and do it that way. Electrical tape around the nut, use a pair of pliers, maybe a channel lock like this, and uh, you'll be able to work it out in a counterclockwise direction. Okay, we're going to remove the star adjuster now. There's a little cap nut on top of that there. That'll come off when we do that. And listen to that click, click, click. There's what I call a rocket spring in this one. And you want to just make sure that you know where that's located when you go to take it apart so that you can put it back together again. You remove the star adjuster in a counterclockwise fashion. If you don't know what counterclockwise is, spin the piece towards you. Here's that click spring we were talking about. This is a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way because when you go to reinstall, well, you may have forgot the orientation of the piece or part. So this little spring that provides the click motion has two sides to it. It has a well side where there's the spring is exposed and there's a little cavity. And then it has a flat side. Well, the flat side goes down when you go to reinstall. Then we have a couple of tension washers here. If we can't get them out, well, we'll get them out later. But there's a flat one that's going to rest up against the... Um, the clicker. Then we have two concave. They're not flat. Don't attempt to flatten them out. That's not the intention of those. They're a tension spring and so they uh, they are cupped. And there's one more uh, washer in here. It's a little bearing shield. So we'll just leave that for when we take the side plate off. That's next on our steps. We have four screws to take the side plate off. And uh, while I'm doing that I would encourage you if you like these kinds of videos to please subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, hit that notification button. That way you'll see the videos that I post, when I post them, and you'll be able to make a decision as to which ones you want to watch. I do all kinds of videos. I do old and new reels alike. I do salt water, fresh water. I do spinning, conventional, bait casting, well, just about everything. So if you like the art of reel repair, if you like to understand how reels are made, how they come apart, want to see the technologies behind them, then subscribing and hitting that notification is the best. I appreciate everybody who has subscribed. We're over 16,000 subscribers now, and I do appreciate each and every one of you that uh, has done the, uh, the subscriptions and the notifications. If you like this video, please uh, take the time to like it as well. Towards the end, I understand that uh, that does help the rankings of the videos, and I'm always looking to Kind of show folks how to do it yourself. That's the idea of this channel. So if you own a saltist and uh, you want to figure out how to service this, well, this video should help. And there's an awful lot of videos in my library right now doing the same thing on different makes and models. And if you search the uh, videos in YouTube, those should show up. Okay, there's two more screws here. You'll notice I am laying those screws on my table here because I want to make sure that all of those screws are the same size. It's not unusual to find one that's a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. And if that's the case, if that's what you find, then you want to make certain that you mark the hole that that one belongs in. So that when you go to reinstall, you put it back in its proper place. I just got one more. I think it's detached, but 
trying to take them all out for that sizing. So far, three out of three are the same. Now I'm applying pressure to the side plate because the springs inside the cavity of this are pushing that side plate out. And I just want to keep it closed until I get that last screw out. The reason for that is there's springs underneath and I want to make sure that as I remove the case that I note the springs. Okay, those four screws are the same. I do notice there's a little bit of salt buildup on two of those, so we're just going to hit that with some penetrating oil just to dissolve that salt. And then I'm going to take those four screws like I did with the other pieces so far. And I'm going to place them into a parts tray. It's nothing more than the bottom of a fast food container. And uh, that helps me keep track of where the pieces and parts go. So pictures and a parts tray are helpful. This is also helpful, a protective glove on your hand. Uh, that keeps some of the, the oils and the like out of uh, harm's way. All right, let's remove this and see what we have underneath. That almost got me there. So there's two springs, one on each side of the yoke. If you're doing this reel, take those off right away. They're real easy to pop and, and kind of shoot out. Well, then you got some trouble. Very simple, straightforward design of the reel. Big gear drives little gear. You can see how big and how little. That's how you get six to one for every one turn of the big one. This little one is turning six times. We have a yoke. Remember the springs are on top of the yoke. Some of the setups have springs below the yoke. We have a jack here that pushes the yoke in and out. That's behind it. We'll take that out right now. Notice on the jack, two sides, there's two humps below and uh, a flat side above. When you go to install, the, the points of that are going to face up. And that's what's going to be pushing the, the yoke and jack inside out. All right, uh, let's remove the stack. Just going to set that to the side for a moment. We have two things. We have an instant anti-reverse bearing here. That's that little, we also have that little uh, bearing we were talking about before there. So let's take that off before we lose that. I'll put that with the other um, washers. And then, so we have the instant anti-reverse, a one-way clutch inside. And then we have a fail-safe or a backup. That's the traditional forked one. So when you're turning your reel this way, you'll notice that it spins free and easy. And then when you go to backpedal it, it'll pull it in. And you'll see that that little beak will lodge into one of the little crescents in that thumb or in that drive to click ratchet. And that's a fail-safe that takes the pressure off the anti-reverse clutch and it ensures that you have a good uh, set uh, to stop the anti-reverse. I'm going to take the yoke and the jack out, or the yoke and the pinion gear, sorry, out before I pull this. And then we're going to pull this assembly off. That's your click ratchet. There's a little washer that goes between the click ratchet and the main gear. And this is your anti-reverse dog. Put those in the basket. And I did that because I want to come underneath here. There's two screws that are holding this plate on. There should be a burring underneath this, and that's what I want to get to. If there's no burring, I apologize. I'm just uh, kind of using intuition here. And I do want to make sure that uh, I get in there and oil that burring if it's there. I should have pulled the, uh, the schematic for that. I, this reel I did not. It is available online, so if you go online and get a schematic, that'll be the visual representation of the exploded view of this. And you can certainly uh, use that to reassemble the reel if you got in some trouble somewhere. This plate should come off, and sure enough, we have a burring underneath here. I'm going to spray that burring down first with some WD-40, because I noticed there's a little bit of grease that's dried up inside there. So we we'll use that to dissolve the grease. You might even be able to just kind of pick this out. Not as easy as I thought. So we're going to leave that in the case. We've cleaned up the residual grease inside. I'm going to go ahead and oil that bearing. Just kind of let it sit for a while while we're doing this. We'll take the back end. We'll make sure that the plate is clean. Right now it's not clean. So we're going to grab a paper towel and wipe off the excess greases and the like from underneath. And now there's a little slot in the shaft here that's going to accept the plate. I'll take that plate and shaft. 
There's some studs that you can align it to. The first thing most important is get the other piece in. And go back to your parts tray and get those two small screws out. And that's, that's to me, that's the value of these parts trays. These little screws can get knocked around so easily on a desk that uh, you'll spend an awful lot of time just trying to figure out where they went uh, if you didn't take the precautions of doing this. Okay, that serves that bearing underneath. We'll come over to the click ratchet. I'm going to just lay that fork off to the side. We'll show you how to put that back in. Take this off. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to wipe down that click ratchet. Just make sure that all greases and, and the like are, are gone there. You have a fork here. It's nice and tight. You can see that it doesn't spread. What you want to do is make sure that one side of that fork is on the top of the plate and one side of that fork is on the bottom and then it sits as we were showing you when it's even. So it sits like that. You have a square. You need to find the square on the post and you need to make sure that this post here accepts the hole from the anti-reverse door. So aim the hole first. And then make sure, I just heard it snap in, make sure that you get the seating there. And now we can do what we did before. Spin the gear. Oops, it came off. I, nothing holding it down. Spin the gear and it should be fine. Pull it. It comes back. It's set properly. Let's go over to the main gear then. This is, I believe, a six drag setup here. Before I set the six, there's that one washer that goes on the top of the post here. So let's go ahead and put that washer back on. Check the main gear. Here, one more in here. These seem to be HT100 kind of, of washers. Uh, check the main gear. So we got a, a little bit of cleanup in, inside here. There's a little bit of oils or something in there. Get those out. Check all the teeth. Make sure that those teeth are, are nice and uniform. No chips or cracks. Check underneath. That's just tarnish. Now we're going to go ahead and grease those teeth. The uh, grease I'm using is a Pen Precision Real Grease. It's a fishing reel grease. Please use fishing reel greases as you go and do your, your fishing reel. Yeah, this is Shimano Reel and I'm using Pen Grease. I don't find much difference in the fishing reel greases. Go ahead and use whatever you like, but make sure it's, it's subject to uh, the fishing reel specs. All right, that goes back on. And I'm thinking right now I probably want to put the yoke back in first. It's, sometimes it's a little tough to mesh that pinion gear and yoke, but we can see what's going on here right away. There's no, no greases or oils or anything on these gears. That's why the reel is, is a little sluggish, and that's why we would expect that it tunes up very nicely uh, once we reapply. So I'm going to have inspected the teeth like we did on the other one. We'll get a good coating of grease in there. Make sure you get some in the slot there as well because that's going to be the shoulder for the yoke. We'll do the same on this. We'll get some grease on the side and on the back. And now we can go ahead. Now this yoke, you're going to find on this yoke that you have two little indentations on the back to accept the uh, jack. So make sure that those indentations go accordingly. Okay, we had a couple of uh, little shim washers going. There's two shim washers here. They go on the bottom of the posts. So let's get those on before we reinstall. One goes on each post. That's gonna help keep it from bottoming out. can put our assembly in. Now we can put that main gear on. And make sure that it's nice and seated. So these are Carbon Tex washers. Now Carbon Tex will tell you that you can lightly grease these, but don't over grease them or you can run them dry. I'm going to put a little bit of grease in. I'm going to use Cal's Universal Dry Grease. Just put a little bit on there. 
We're going to smooth it all the way around. And then we're going to wipe off the excess so that you can still see the cross hatching on that on that dry washer. That's the uh, the method to do this. And we're going to do that three times, one for each of these. Again, don't leave a lot in there because a lot's not needed. Most of the time you're going to use dry grease on washers that are porous. That'll help maintain the, the shelf life, if you will, of the, the washers. So that's uh, a washer will be um, like a leather washer. That would be a porous washer. Okay, we'll take one of those, put that on. Now we have the three metal washers. All three of these are different, so pay attention to them when you take them out. The first one is a solid piece of metal with a rectangular center. That's the first metal washer that goes into the reel. I'm trying to keep this reel balanced without falling. So the first one, solid metal. Second drag washer. The middle one is called the eared washer. It has a circle in the middle and two ears and those two ears are kind of pointed down. Point the ones down and center them so that they fit into the slots on each side of the main gear. Third one in. The fabric washer doesn't matter what the order is, this one does. And then you'll notice on this one we have a solid metal with an indent on this side and a raised on that side. This is sometimes called a bell washer. That one's the top washer and goes on like that. Next up then would be the gear sleeve spacer. All right, so that's the inside of the reel with the exception of the jack. We're going to take the regular fishing reel grease here. And just put a little bit where that jack is going to slide up and down. I use an artist brush to kind of paint it on. Remember what we said, those two points go up and they slide to each side of that jack. Just slide that. Now when we go to reinstall that side case, we're going to have to make sure that the stud from the eccentric and this hole align, so be aware of that. All right, with the exception of those two springs, that side is done. And all I want to do right now is just make sure that the anti-reverse clutch is dry and clean. You don't oil a clutch. The clutch is a friction-driven piece. It has roller bearings inside of it and it's housed around Teflon, which is kind of self-lubricating. Just get the old grease, if there is old grease, out of there. Make sure it doesn't have the dirt, and that's all you need to do to make sure it's properly functioning. Same up top here, we could put a little bit of grease into the, the spool bushing on that side, but it's a bushing, and this one's Teflon, so it really doesn't need anything, but I'll put a little, little dot in there. Okay. All I need to do to close this side up then is to put the springs back on here. So let's go do that. Then we're going to go over to the other side and we'll make sure that we service the, uh, the spool and the line guide as well. I'm just going to make sure that I have the pinion gear seated so that I have the most spacing uh, for that spring. There's a slot on that other side of the pinion gear which wraps around the post on the spool. And um, if you don't have it seated properly, it makes it a little bit tougher. A little bit of oil onto the eccentric. That's all you need there. This point right here is the one that needs to go in that center slot for the uh, free spool release jack. And we'll just put it all together, see if we can make that match. So what I like to do is just hold tension. And then if I throw that, there you go. If I throw that, Eventually, I will meet that center point. Good point to take a look, see what's happening. Do I have a spin? And right now, it appears that I have it set. We won't know until we put the tension on the drag washer, but I think there's a, a good, better chance than not that we have it set. We can put the screws in both sides again. And while I'm doing this, if you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on a reel, and uh, you have a, uh, a gotcha moment there where you're a little bit stumped about the, uh, the process. Maybe something's gone awry, you didn't take a picture, you don't have the schematic, you don't know how to get yourself out of a particular situation. If you leave that question in the email, 
I'll try to address that, uh, see if I can't get you back on track. I know that I've also done a series of uh, reel in a bag projects where that didn't help and uh, somebody sent it in to have me kind of put it back together for them and that's okay too. I credit everybody for trying. This is a, a do-it-yourself channel. I really encourage everybody to do it themselves. Yeah, I, I do real repair, but I uh, long ago decided I don't, I couldn't and I don't want to repair every reel in the world. So I welcome everybody to do that. And uh, maybe if you're talented enough and you want to start your own reel repair business, I would encourage you to do that. It is a lot of fun. All right, there's two more screws to put in here. I noticed when I put the bridge in or the cap on that the side plate uh, burring came out. Don't panic. But again, if you didn't notice that, and all of a sudden you look down on your table and there's a, a burring there, well, go to the schematic and see where it came from. In this case, I was aware of where it came from. All right, last one in. And we'll do the same thing with this burring that we did with the one in the case. And spin it. I just put it between my fingers and spin it. Make sure that it's a, it's nice and free. And then this one's a shielded burring. It's not sealed. So I'm going to flood it with some oil. Put that back onto the post. Now remember what we said. We had that little one. That was next. The little burring shield kind of uh, piece. Then we had the concave one. That's the tension washer. That goes next. Then we had the flat washer. Then we had the click mechanism, that uh, little point. Remember what we said, the hollow, or the one with the cavity, goes down. And then there's a little washer on top of that that I probably didn't mention before. I'm going to take that one piece out of there. Now let's go ahead and put the star adjuster back on. And this will go in a clockwise manner now. Now if this little point does not push in the clicker and it starts to jam, you push it in yourself. So just bring it down till it sets. I like to do it just like that. You might be able to see this, you might not, but it's just a little bit proud here right now. And what I'll do here is I'll just use my pick to push it down. Now you can hear that click, click, click again that we started with, only it's going forward instead of reverse. Now we've got the click mechanism on this side. All right, we have the little uh, hole fast nut for the handle, the handle itself, the cap nut. I like to do this by hand to make sure that I got it threaded properly and not in uh, cross stripping it. Now I want to put that all the way down and I want to make sure that we're seated on that. So right now when I turn it I have the handle turning. That's all good. We should be in free spool. We are. Boy, nice and quiet with all the, uh, the new lube over there. Oh, this is turning beautifully. All right, we have a line guide that we need to service. And we have a burring on the back side, so let's go take care of that. I'm going to do the um, burring first because we have this post that gets in the way of that line guide. And I do think that I have to bring it out this side. I hope that I have to bring it out that side. If not, i got to take the side plate off again and uh, go back and remove that. These screws are in tight. That tells me between the uh, tension on those screws and the salt that I saw on the ones on the other side, that the reel hasn't been serviced in quite some time. You saw how dry it was. Oils and lubrications will evaporate over time, and these have all evaporated. So my guess is it's a couple of years since its annual service. All right, again, I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm going to lay those on the bench to make sure that they're all the same size screw. And if they're not, I'm gonna mark which ones are where. And that wrench on my Table errors reminded me I have not tightened down that cap nut all the way. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do that too. All right, we should be able to pull this side plate off. We have a little uh, post here that has to come out. Thank goodness it comes out on this side. And just gonna put those through. It would be tough, but it would need to be done. If it wasn't coming out on this side, you would have to go back and uh, open up the other side to get that post off. This is one of these cases where the screw head actually acts as the retaining clamp for that crossbar. I guess that's a good idea. Your, your mine guide pole cap won't fall off this way. So we've done that. We're going to slide the post out. When we slide the post out, there is a little bit of corrosion on there, so let's get that off there while we're at it. Just using some light steel wool to do that. I'm going to leave these two right here because I don't need to go far. Now I can remove the, the pole cap. And this might be a plastic cap, so be careful about it when you do this. You don't want to make you want to make certain that you don't have an issue here with the um, the cap breaking. Let's just use a little washer here. I'm just going to see if I can't tap that pole out. Sometimes the vibrations will move it. This takes a little while and a little patience, but it's starting to fall now. And now I'll just see if I can't grab it without knocking it back in. There we go. So that's the pole that you wanted to remove. And here's why you wanted to remove it. There's a lot of dirt and grease and buildup inside here on the shoulders. You can see it, or hopefully you can see it. You want to clean all of that out because if you don't clean that out, it's going to eventually get to the point where it starts to jam up in the grooves of the worm gear and um, cause nothing but issues later. All right, that can go back in. Hold the bottom of the pole and crank your reel, and that will help set that pole down. Here's that little it might be hard to see, but there's a little washer, a cup, cup of washer that goes on there. And then I'm going to put a squirt of oil in it and keep that lubricated. And we can put the pole cap back on. So a lot of people skip that pole service. I don't recommend skipping it. If you're going to do a complete service, do a complete service. If you're spending enough time on the reel, don't shortchange yourself and have the pole become problematic later. I oil the worm gears. I do not uh, use grease on them. And the reason for that is uh, the grease tends to trap the micro sands and salts. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't want to have anything trapped that's going to start grinding away. Okay, we have that bar we can put back in now. So let's go ahead and do that. Sure, it goes all the way in. Then we can take that screw. And that screw again, the, the ridge of that screw is acting as the, the clamp to hold that little piece in place. All right, the only thing we have left then is to do the, uh, the greasing of the back end of the spool and the burring in the cover, clean up the cover if there's any dirt in there. And uh, we're pretty much done. If you have a reel and you're not interested in servicing it, I mentioned before I do service the uh, reels. And uh, send me a note to my email on a business card that follows. I'll be happy to provide you with repair information. All right, a little bit of grease into the seat. A little bit of grease on the stud of the gear. A little bit of grease onto the drive. I don't grease the... Um, idler gear. It's plastic. It's self-lubricating. So I don't uh, feel it's necessary to do that. And uh, time to reinstall them. So Saltus is going to read parallel for you to line up. And go ahead and find the, the holes where it lines up to. All 
All right, just tightening up the side plate screws then. So if you're a first responder, essential personnel, anybody involved in keeping us safe during the pandemic, thank you for everything that is that you do. It's nice to see that the pandemic is finally starting to wane and that, uh, well, you're finally getting a break after all the months and months of hard, tent, uh, strenuous work there, both mentally and physically. Thank you for, uh, for your efforts there. All right, so last of the three side plate screws. I mentioned before I left that on my desk here because, well, we got to tighten up that cap nut. When you tighten up the cap nut, you need to make sure that that scalloped edge of the nut aligns with the hole so that you can put the set screw in. Again, if you don't have one of these wrenches, that's okay. Put electrical tape around there so that you don't mar the finish. And uh, go ahead and do it that way. But make sure when you go to to tighten this that you have the clearance here for that set screw. Set screw goes in next. And then we'll be able to test this one. See how we did. Those of you that know me and these little screws, this may be a while. Okay, we're in. It's tight. Let's tighten down the drag wash to make sure it all works. Give it a spin. Boy, that's nice and easy. Scott, you found yourself a nice one here. This is one of Scott's from the uh, Pasadena flea markets. And it's a, it's a beauty. You can put a little bit of oil in the top that's riding along that uh, bar as well. It's plastic. It really doesn't need it, but it doesn't hurt to have that there. We'll give this a spin. It's spinning nicely. This reel does have an adjuster on it. If you want to loosen that up a little bit to spin it more freely, you can do that. Or you can tighten it down a little bit. Either way, it's going to help you. And I'll just back it up a little bit. There you go. Very nice. And into production. Once you do that, if you've serviced the reel, knock the drag off. Take it back so that you don't keep it compressed and uh, have it press out all of the pieces. Okay, that's it. That's your saltest. It's the model uh, 30HA. It's the Saltus Level Wine 6.1 by Daiwa. It's a beautiful reel. That's how you take it apart and service it and keep it fishing for a long time to come. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed it. Please, everybody, stay safe, stay well, and stay watching, and have a great day.